Hi, I'm John the Engineer, and this series of videos is going to be how the great Canadian gambler got involved in politics 30 years ago, March 1979. At that time, I was a gambling crusader, being busted, running games, flaunting it, thought I had a loophole in the law, police were threatened to bust me, uh, all leading up to the election of 1979, the general election, where I was going to talk about legalizing gambling. So this is the 30 years ago series starting now. July 21st, 1993, 3 a.m. I woke up stiff and groggy, but the cold steel cut soon reminded me why I was in an Ottawa police jail cell. Project Robin Hood. The police had been trying to find me for a week. Across Canada, arrest warrant had been issued for me yesterday, and the four more hours on that cold cot before my bail hearing made me curse my judgment. I should have given myself up in the morning and been spared the night on the cold steel bed. Giving up after a 4 p.m. press conference made for a long night waiting until court in the morning. Laying on my back, using my jacket as a pillow, I saw the same kind of graffiti on the ceiling I'd noticed upon my first visit to the old Ottawa jail as a manacled guest 18 years ago. Burned into the ceiling were names and their lives of crimes. Vince Violencia, assault with a deadly weapon. Tommy La Trouble, robbery with violence. So I also had written my alleged indictable offense with my matches, John Turmel, gambling with cards. I'd love to have seen the reaction of officers patrolling Canada's lonely highways when my arrest warrant came over the air. Project Robin Hood, be on the lookout for John Turmel, dangerous with a deck of cards. That's right, the latest criminal to hit the wanted posters was John Turmel, professional. I was wanted for having operated the biggest gaming house ever raided in Canadian history. 28 tables, 7 poker, 21 blackjack. Things had started to look bad for my bankroll the moment Bob Ray became Premier of Ontario and announced that they were becoming my competition in the gambling business. As a poor kid entrepreneur, I'd run against the rich kid socialist in the 1982 by-election, and I doubt Bob can forget his drubbing in our debates. My government competitor wasn't being run by someone who had happy memories of tangling with me. But the camel's back really started to break last week when the Ottawa Citizen ran a huge front page story titled It's No Bluff, Casino Owners Flush With Success, detailing how my 28 table, 100 employee Casino Termel at the Topaz Entertainment Plaza in Ottawa. This was the story that hit the, <laughs> the Ottawa Citizen when they were really mad about me already. The story explained how I had been raided many to other times before finding a loophole in the gambling laws, which got my last casino acquitted of being a gaming house in 1989. This explained why my poker and blackjack parlor was so big, and why it had operated in public for over a year and a half without police intervention. Having fought for so long and paid the penal price to find a way to run my kind of casino legally, I thought I'd finally punch through. With that acquittal by Justices Lennox and Fontana in 1989, I thought I'd won myself many years of lead time to establish my kind of legal casinos in Ontario before the government could establish theirs. I had meetings with the police every step of the way. My winning formula for small and medium mom and pop cheers with chips, poker and blackjack parlors went from 10 employees to 100 in its third six months and grossed winnings of over 3 million. I'd announced expansion from 100 to 1,000 employees in three more locations right in front of Bob Ray's office at Queen's Park in Toronto. I hoped for another 30 million in another six months. I'd bet another tenfold increase in jobs from 1,000 to 10,000 in another six months across Ontario for another 300 million before taking my loophole to the other provinces. The real problem was that my kind of private casino was open for action seven days a week, 24 hours a day, with blackjack betting limits of $300, while the limits were $10 for Bob Ray's government licensed casinos. With no rake off at the poker, while Bob's casinos didn't have poker at all, it was a combination that couldn't be beat. 
I figured my loophole could have made me a billionaire within a couple of years while creating a new industry my way and tens of thousands of jobs in the process. I had to be stopped or I'd get rich and spend all my gambling winnings setting up charitable projects around the world. Lexus. The sheriff's men did, after all, call it Project Robin Hood for good reason. I gambled that if they left me alone, I'd always be able to pay the government its 50% in income taxes from the second half of the year. So I spent it all, after expenses, as fast as it came in for the first half of the year. And I spent it all on the Green Dollar Local Employment Let Software Promotion and Development and Charity. So now I owe Revenue Canada over 300000 which I'll never be able to pay because they went and busted me two weeks into their half of the, of the year. Another problem was that after not one but two provincial court judges at Ottawa had ruled that Termel-style gambling does not fall under any of the five definitions of a gaming house, they had not appealed because two judges were right. My poker and blackjack parlors in Ottawa and Toronto did not fall under any of the five illegal definitions. Yet, I knew problems were brewing when the Toronto police telephoned to inform me that if I didn't shut down my Toronto game after six months in open operation, they would charge me no matter what the Ottawa judges had said. I wonder how many times the sheriff told Jesse James to take his illegal gain and get out of town or he'd be charged. If my Toronto poker and blackjack parlor was really illegal, why'd they let me get away with it? I can only conclude they were on shaky ground and knew it. It was political rather than judicial force I was dealing with. Still, to avoid the legal har harassment of my dealers and gambling acquaintances, I closed down rather than <clears throat> be charged, which might have also emboldened the Ottawa police to raid my game. Funny aside, what made the Toronto police mad was that Doug Dearborn, one of my gamblers in Toronto, had started up his own game modeled on my system and my loopholes, and uh, they were worried about it proliferating, so they ordered me to shut down, and I did. But he didn't, so they ended up busting him. And it cost him 25000 in lawyer's fees before he gave up and pleaded guilty. And he was hit with $25,000 in fines. So that's what happened to my competition in Toronto. He took the pie that I ducked. And, of course, he went and paid a lawyer, Alan Gold, all that big money for nothing to go and lose. I never heard of an eight-day preliminary hearing at three grand a day. Boy, did they soak him. The proper procedure to challenge my Ottawa Topaz parlor would have been for the Crown to have made an application to the Ontario Court of Appeal for an extension of time to appeal the first two acquittals. I was acquitted. They should have appealed. They didn't. Supposedly, only a panel of three judges of the Court of Appeal may conclude differently than the trial judges. The problem with doing it the right legal way through the Court of Appeal was that it would have left me acquitted and open while we argued, and they had to close me down or I'd get too big. So they faced another problem dealing with me. Ever since my first raid, when I went broke paying a lawyer to defend me, I've been doing my own legal representation. Rather than be limited by the money I have to pay a lawyer, it's allowed me to fight as hard as possible for the least money. Taking on that legal responsibility has also allowed me to become a guerrilla lawyer for hundreds of other cases. I had won my case in 1989 myself, which might reinforce my case for being not only an expert in the mathematics of gambling, but also an expert in the law of gambling. To stress that only the Court of Appeal had power to overturn the first two acquittals by Justice Lennox and Fontana and let them raid my Topaz game, I made that application for them and offered to consent to the extension of time for the Crown to appeal my acquittals since they had themselves hadn't thought to ask. And Justice Finlayson of the Ontario Court of Appeal couldn't grant the extension they themselves would not ask for. So they didn't want an extension of time to appeal my acquittal. They just wanted to bust me again. So the pressure continued to build. There were television interviews. There were full-page ads in the papers. The politicians were complaining. I can show you a few of the full-page ads. They were kind of fun. And the, uh, <laughs> you know, there's a picture of the Casino Termel Kaz car at the track. So full full-page ads in the newspaper. The mayor of Ottawa had bemoaned her having to wait for the government permission to open a casino while Termel was just doing it. Other politicians were demanding something be done. 
Well, you just don't expect to survive that kind of heat, even if you're legal. Sure enough, two days after the big front page news story, my cellular phone call rang and Sergeant Bob Cleary of the Ottawa Police Services informed me that they and the Ontario Provincial Police had just raided Casino Turmel and Project Robin Hood. The charter right not to be charged again once acquitted seemed not worth the paper it's printed on when the government wants to stop you. Worst news, they were throwing in the silly charges of keeping a bookmaking house. Being in the business of bookmaking and controlling monies from bookmaking. Now, as bookmaking is on events you don't participate, like fights and sports and games, and gaming is on events where you do participate, like cards and dice and stuff, bookmaking charge against my card games have always been thrown out. Adding bookmaking charges they will have to later withdraw or lose was simply to make their weak case look stronger. And sure enough, on the day the trial started, they withdrew the three extraneous, useless charges. 